Hello, good evening, my friends. I welcome you to another edition of uh, Mentoring with Bola Adewara. Today, we're going to look at uh, questions protege must ask their mentors. We want to check if our people actually understand what they are doing. If you say you are a mentor, do you really understand what it takes to be a mentor? If you say you are a protege, do you really know what you are after? So we'll be looking at the twin question today. Questions protege must ask mentors and also question mentors must ask the protegees. These are some of the uh, discussions we've raised in this book, uh, Discover the Secret of Mentoring. And uh, I believe, uh, I'm glad a lot of people have been getting it, and I believe it's going to bless you if you want to be a mentor or a good mentee. Now, let us start with a question protégés must ask mentors. Uh, in years gone by, it is often thought that only teachers could question students to find out what they already know, to identify gaps in knowledge and understanding. However, reasoning in the modern age is very different. Students could ask their teachers questions. I mean, you know the kind of children we are having these days. Some of them will tell you, Daddy, why are you doing this? These are questions we dare not ask our parents when we were young. Students could ask their teachers questions. In homes, children could ask parents questions. The years of obey without questioning is fast depleting. You know those days when we were in the university, they would say obey before complain. These days, the current generation will want to complain before they obey. In mentoring process, Protégé could ask questions. The question to ask differ from stage to stage. There are questions to ask before, questions to ask during, and questions to ask uh, maybe at the conclusion of the mentoring process. Uh, for instance, the rules guiding questions. There are rules guiding these questions that you ask. Number one, the first rule. Questioning is the best way to learn. The only dumb question is the question that is not asked. Remember that if you are not experiencing triumph or uh, uh, accomplishment in your life, then there are so many things that you do not know. Two, you don't overwhelm him, you don't overwhelm the mentor by asking all the 30 questions at one time. I want to show you about 30 questions the protege can ask the mentor and also about 25 questions mentor should ask protégé. But so uh, what I'm saying right now is that uh, you cannot ask all the 30 questions at one time. You can ask the question differently, you know, a different, like I said earlier, before the process starts, during the process, and after, after it. You don't overwhelm him by asking all the 30 questions at one time. Instead, Find apt times to uh, uh, unsurprisingly entwine the question into your, into your normal banters with your mentor. You can just find a way of, when, when you are just chatting or something like that, you can ask him, ah, please, can I ask you this question? You know that kind of a thing. It's not as if it should be a formal thing. Okay, the mentor, please, uh, I have a question. I want to ask you a question there that it, look, it makes him look as if you are putting him on the spot. Three, question could even be asked through emails. One specific question every week or every month. Some of these questions may sound insulting to him. You must know the right time to ask. You must show maturity in asking and intention to learn from his personal life. Five, don't make your mentor feel he is being put on the spot because of his moral failures, which he knows you know. It could damage the relationship. For instance, if your mentor 
For instance, if your mentor just have a, maybe a kind of a, maybe he has a, a, a failed marriage, and then you are now asking him questions. You know, you are not showing any kind of compassion. Look, why did your marriage fail? Maybe you told me that these things like that cannot be. No. Don't make your mentor feel you are putting him on the spot. Six, if you have a mentor, make sure you ask questions from him. Knowing the answers will help you tremendously at some point in life. Here, we are focusing on questions to ask before, um, before and during the process. Different writers have come up with different questions to ask. John Maxwell posits 12 to 13 questions. I'm sure many of you, you know the man called John Maxwell. One of the questions, I mean, some of the 12 questions John Maxwell posed include uh, what values guide your decisions? How do you define success? What is the most uh, effective daily habit you possess? What accomplishment, accomplishment are you most uh, proud of? What is the greatest piece of advice you have gotten? What do you wish you knew at my stage of life or career? What do you wish, uh, what is the greatest, let me look at it again, um, what is the greatest lesson you've learned from a particular failure in your life? What are you learning right now? What positive thing do you see in me that I need to focus on for my development? What obstacles that I don't see is preventing me from moving forward? What must I do to overcome that obstacle and keep going? These are some of the questions a protege can ask his mentor. Um, John Maxwell has also put it that, uh, what do you hope to teach me during this mentoring relationship? It's legitimate. You can ask that kind of question. What can I do to make this process worthwhile for you? You know, these are legitimate questions you can ask your mentor. And these are some of the questions maybe at the beginning. However, below, uh, below or be, beside, all these, uh, beside all these questions, we can also look at questions that could yield profitable answers in mentoring process. Good questions that will yield profitable answers for you. For instance, what are your short-term and long-term goals and dreams? What do you do every day? At what point in your life did goal setting occur to you? What kind of books do you read then and what kind of books do you read now? And uh, which of them really influence your thought and life most? Uh, the fifth one could be some things like, uh, do you still have goals you have not accomplished? And what are you doing about them? You can ask such questions. You know, it depends on maybe the age of your mentor or something. It could be maybe you are in your 30s or you are in your 20s and your mentor is in his 40s or in his 50s. You can ask him such questions that like, what goals does he have? What goals has he achieved in his life? And what are the remaining goals he's still waiting for? You see, uh, number six, yes, number six, uh, you can also ask questions like uh, your inability to accomplish them. Is it a failure? Is it a kind of, is it, is it your failure or a kind of external factors? You know, there are things you see in your mentor. Of course, your mentor too has his own failure. He has things that he has not been able to achieve. You can ask him questions about it that, oh, your inability to do this thing, is it uh, an external thing or is it the kind of your, your own kind of failure? Number seven, what is one action you have taken that has accounted for most of your successes? That is, what has he done that account for the success he has recorded in his life? You can ask another question, maybe question eight now. How can I help you to accomplish your goals and dreams? 
Am I relevant at all? Question 9. You can ask him, how would you like me to follow up in this mentoring activity? Question 10. Uh, what does the future mean to you? What factors do you consider most often when planning for the future? You want to learn from him. It's good to ask such questions. Question 11, you can look at it and say, if you could change your life in one way, what would you change? Question 12, how do you handle obstacles and roadblocks? Question 13, what are your strengths and your weaknesses? Question 14, have you failed before? How do you handle failure? Question 15, um, you can say, who is your hero? Who has the most impact on your life? Question 16, you could ask him, um, when you are confused on issues or have problems, what do you do? Question 17, if you consult people, what do you choose? Or why do you choose that person? You see, these are some of the questions you can ask. Um, let me give you another maybe six or seven more questions that you can ask your, your mentor. Did you through any mentoring program? Did you go through any mentoring program? If yes, how? That, were you mentored? Did you go through any mentoring program maybe through your father or you chose a mentor to get to where you are in life today? Question 19, how do you spend your time? Question, uh, question 20, what contribution do you think you are making to life? Uh, question 21, what do you want to be written as your epitaph? That's a question one of my mentors taught me a long time ago. When I was still, one of, when I was in a church, uh, let me keep the name of the church now. And uh, I remember I was maybe in my, in my middle thirties that time. And he asked me, he said, Bola, if you die today, or you die maybe when you are 50, or you die maybe in your 70, what do you want people to write as your epitaph? What do you want to be written on your tomb? And I wrote it down. Here lies Bola Adewara. An author of many books, writer, journalist, a man who lived and flicked his pen that mankind would be better. I remember I said that in the and he said, Wow, this is said, then go and live that life. And since then I have been living the life myself. Today I give thank I give glory to God Almighty. Question 22. Um, what most children of successful people don't often surpass their fathers. Why? You know, you can ask him that question without making him feel you are putting his children on the spot. You see, when you look at many of these people who have succeeded in life, look for their children today. So many of them, their children are nowhere to be found. Some of them are just living large on their father's name or on their family name. Uh, maybe question 23, you can ask questions like, uh, is it a failure on the part of the parents? You know, asking why is it that their children don't make the kind of names they made? Question 24, uh, you can ask a question like, uh, are you troubled that your children might not surpass you? Some people will say that question is wicked, but it's not wicked. Many of us in life, we need to look at it and we need to tell our children the truth. We need to tell our children the truth. When you say that your child is not measuring up, it's good to quickly call the child and sit him down. That look, I have succeeded. I have made a name for myself. You, what name do you want to make for yourself? Or do you just want to sit down there and be sell and marketing? Oh, I am the son of this, I am the son of that, I am the son of that. Will your children be happy to say, I am the son of this man? Let me round it off here. Maybe let me just call it 25 for our questions. Now the question 20. Can you imagine? Is it on? Is it on? Yeah. Can you imagine what Deba has done? <laughs> this country, Nigeria. We need to just ask God to bless us. 
we never knew that this will happen and uh, <laughs> ah, up Nigeria. Anyway, uh, I was just rounding it up for uh, question 20, 25th. Uh, I say, what, um, can you see me well? Well, this light is, uh, anyway, um, I just think that these are some of the things I want you to learn today. Uh, because NEPA has performed, um, I'm sure that uh, it will be well. Uh, with our country and uh, I will come back in our next broadcast so that uh, you will um, know uh, I will be able to teach you on our next uh, question I mean the next uh, topic which will be question the mentor can ask the protege question mentor can ask the protege what we have treated today is just a question the protege can ask the mentor I thank you for watching and please pray for our country, Nigeria. Pray for this country. And God will help us. I thank you so much. Bless you. Cheerio.